up you guys welcome back or welcome to my channel if you're new today I'm gonna be doing my Bible study and it's not really a Bible study actually that's that could be misinterpreted I'm actually gonna be teaching you guys how I go ahead and take my notes whenever I am studying my Bible you guys have always asked me over my Instagram over on here if I have a special way that I go about my Bible studies I feel like everybody just kind of has like their own way I guess so since I'm starting the book of James today I thought it would be a really good idea to like show you how I take my notes and give you some tips and stuff so if you're interested on how I do my Bible studies how I take notes then just go ahead and keep on watching I just need to have my knee up right now because I feel like it's just I'm too cozy I literally have like fuzzy socks on I'm having a great time anyway all right so the first tip that I have for you guys before you even go ahead and start reading is that you go ahead and start getting in prayer now I like to go ahead and get into prayer because I pray against distraction um, confusion and if anything I just pray for clarity for understanding and for the Lord to just lead me as I'm reading the Bible so I pray for clarity I pray against confusion I pray against distraction because when you're about to read the word out of of nowhere everyone wants to text you everyone needs your assistance or you get like sleepy out of nowhere so these are attacks of the enemy I'm convinced it's for sure that they're attacks and that's what you want to pray against along with that another tip is to find a time in your day where you're not being distracted in the sense of like you know no one's gonna need you you know so don't start reading your Bible at like 4 in the afternoon if you know that's when everyone needs you to go pick something up or go grocery shopping or stuff like that for me I find that time to be in the morning it used to be in the afternoon though so only you really know what time that is and don't push them into a corner last minute like prioritize your Bible study prioritize this time you need to learn how to make that time for the Lord set aside that time just like anything else in our life we make time for that our job and if you go to school the same thing applies for this okay so now to what I actually use when I'm studying my Bible is my Bible of course so I already have it sitting down right here this is the Bible I'll show you up close once I show you like kind of how I'm gonna study it it's a study Bible so it looks a little bit different than most I also have a notebook and I encourage you guys to get a notebook that's specifically for your note taking when studying the word don't mix it up with the one that you take when you go to the church and take notes or to any other thing you want this to just be specifically for your notes it'll help you stay on top of it and really organize and really you just need like a pen and like highlighters I can't find the other highlighters but it's not that big of a deal just get like two highlighters sticky notes work great as well because if you like to take notes and stick it on your bible or questions that you have I really like that a tip is like ask questions you know if you don't understand something it's okay to ask the Lord and like ask for clarity and sometimes as you're reading the scripture most of the time you'll get the answer but there are times where like he'll ask take you through a season and he'll answer that question for you or even throughout that week someone will help you understand like what you were trying to ask so that's why I really like sticky notes um, if you have like a thought or if you have a question right in the moment you can just go ahead and write it down and just stick it on the Bible and it's really cool to see once that question gets answered how like you once didn't understand it and now you do all right so now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I go ahead and take the notes all right, so since we're actually starting in the book of James, I just go ahead and I write that down in my notes. I'm going to write down James. And then in my Bible, I have the purpose, the author, the original audience, the date it was written, the setting, and the key verse. And this I also write down on my notes along with James. So I actually just like to copy this. I like to start with the author. So right here it tells me that the author is James. Jesus' brother, a leader in the Jerusalem church. Then I like to go on with the purpose. And the purpose says to expose hypocritical practices and to teach right Christians behavior. The original audience for this book is the first century Jewish Christians residing in Gentile communities outside Palestine. I also write down the date it was written. It says probably AD 49. I also wrote down the setting and it said this letter expresses James' concern for persecuted Christians who were once part of the Jerusalem church. The key verse is, but someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds and I will show you my faith by my deeds. And also this first page goes ahead and explains 
all of it kind of in a summary for example right here in the beginning it literally says james begins his letter by outlining some general characteristics of the christian life next he exhorts christians to act justly in society and then it says he follows this practical advice with a theological discourse on the relationship between faith and action and then james shows the importance of controlling one's speech and it just goes ahead and shows you kind of like how it goes down through the scripture so i love this study bible if you guys want the link it'll be down below so yeah this is how your first page is going to look i can just look through this if i ever need to um get a refresher understand the purpose of it the audience or anything like that and now for the actual note taking okay so i already know the first things that i'm going to write down is this right here i'm going to write down genuine religion and I'm also going to write down trials and temptations. All right, so we can start now. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Personally, I would like to write down that we need to take joy whenever we face trials, so I'm going to write that down. And I'm also going to go ahead and write down that the testing of our faith produces perseverance. And I also want to write down that a double-minded person is unstable and should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. This is already deep, okay. <laughs> James is not here to play. He is saying how it is. I love that. So now we're going to go on with um, James 1, 9. And in this passage, it's going to start using a lot of parables. So I want to go ahead and show you what I will do in that situation so that I can understand it. So it says, believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their right position, but the rich should take pride in their humiliation, since they will pass away like a wildflower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. Its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away even while they go about their business. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, the person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. I'm going to highlight, blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. So let's say you didn't understand what James meant when he said, since they will pass away like a wildflower, for the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant, is blossom falls. Like, let's say you didn't understand all of that. Um, it tells me right here that's James 111. I will look down here and look for 111, 110. Okay, so this is where it's going to explain what this meant. And it's going to give you a little bit more clarity. And I want to just show you how that looks. So it says, if wealth, power, and status means nothing to God, why do we attribute so much importance to them and so much honor to those who possess them? Do your material possessions give you goals and your only reason for living? If they were gone, what would be left? What do you have in your heart, not your bank account? If I look back a little bit more where it says James 1, 9 to 11, it says the poor should be glad that riches mean nothing to God. Otherwise, these people will be considered unworthy. The rich should be glad that money means nothing to God because money is easily lost. We find true wealth by developing our spiritual life. God is interested in what is lasting, our souls, not what is temporary, our money and possessions. So yeah, this is kind of like what you expect out of a, a study Bible. It gives you a little bit more insight, more clarity, and it also like asks you questions that you can ask yourself and answer in your notes. So yeah, it really does help with your note taking as well. From reading all of this in the bottom, um, what I'm going to write down is God is interested in what is lasting our souls not what is temporary our money and possessions so i'm going to go ahead and write that down on my notes and something that i want to do once i'm off camera well once i'm like done with my study you can say i would have actually gone through these questions and just talked to the lord about them so this is really how like my notes are starting to look right now and to wrap up the last part of this page i'm going to put down the scripture that i saw right here which is um blesses the one who perseveres under trial i feel like it is the perfect way to just end up this first page and this is actually all that i'm going to show you guys 
I try to make it as simple as I possibly could so I really really hope that this helps one of you guys it's nothing crazy it's nothing major you guys should not be afraid to like study the Bible by yourself and if you don't have a study Bible by now and you're kind of like okay but I don't know like the author and the setting and all of that if you have a phone which you most likely do or a laptop or something like that you can actually just look it up yourself and like figure these things out at least now you know what to look for if it is that you want to take notes the way that I like to take notes if you don't have the study Bible then go ahead and just buy it it's not expensive I actually gave a study Bible away like a couple months ago if you guys want me to make another giveaway like that please let me know I think it'll be really really fun um, that's when I think I was like at 5k and now I'm at 10 no I'm at 15k now so if you guys want me to do another Bible study giveaway please let me know and I would love to do that for you also don't get like really like used to someone else's notes for example i took down smaller like notes right now um but sometimes i'll write down like literal paragraphs of things because if that helps you at that moment then write that down as you go and you learn your own style as you begin to do it so just like trust the lord through this process i promise it's nothing scary um get into prayer before you get um into your studies and if it helps you actually do like a bible study with a friend so there's two questions that I want to answer that you guys were commonly asking me on my Instagram the first one is is it okay if you guys are studying the Bible on your phone um, personally I feel like it's way better if you just go ahead and buy a like a physical book like a Bible book because when you're on your phone if we're being honest we're gonna get distracted out of nowhere we remember that we needed to text somebody back or email somebody or you just go on Instagram when you see the notification I feel like it's way too tempting if you know that that's not gonna be the case for you then I mean okay but personally I feel like it's just better to have a physical one anyway and I've been asked if there's anything else that I like to use to study the Bible um, I really don't have any like books that run through the bible yet i'm gonna get into those eventually but i encourage you guys to check out um bible project here on youtube so i think that's all for today i hope that you guys enjoyed it if you're not already don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and i hope to see you guys in my next video bye